ثم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المفتد ومن يهدي فلن تجد له ولي مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما All praise due to Allah and after that all praise is due to Allah We thank him, we seek help from him, we ask guidance in him and we seek forgiveness in him from our own evils and from our own bad deeds Anyone who has been guided by Allah, they are indeed guided. And anyone who has been misguided by Allah, you will never find a guardian to guide them. I bear witness. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except for Allah, the only one without partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad wasallam is a servant and his messenger to proceed forward. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah that Allah has brought us, brought us uh, to another Jummah and for making all of us Muslim. Alhamdulillah that Allah has given us a voice to speak, uh, a voice to speak with, and also for making us Muslim. Alhamdulillah that Allah has given us the tongue to make remembrance of Him. And with this remembrance of Allah, we get even more reward than we normally would. Alhamdulillah that Allah has given us the ability to listen to the beautiful sounds around us and for making us Muslims. Alhamdulillah that Allah has given us the ability to see the beauty He has created and for making us Muslim. Alhamdulillah that Allah has given us a sense of taste to enjoy the various pleasures of food and for making us Muslim. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us the sense of touch to appreciate the differences in creation and for making us Muslim. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, that Allah has given us wealth. For if we were, uh, uh, if, for if we are here in this gathering, then we are amongst the few elite in this world. And Alhamdulillah, for Allah making us Muslim. Alhamdulillah that Allah has given us health and for making us Muslim. وَإِن تَعَذُّوا بِنِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ لَا تَحْسُوهَا And if you should count the favors of Allah, you would not be able to count them. Alhamdulillah that Allah has made us أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ in the best of forms. Alhamdulillah for giving us a heart that is the greatest machine on the face of this earth, working without rest for even longer than our own lifetimes. Alhamdulillah for giving us that same heart that can expand to encompass love, to encompass mercy, and to encompass compassion. Alhamdulillah for giving us an intellect without which we would be no better than any of the other animals that are out there in creation. Alhamdulillah for making humankind the best of creation. And Alhamdulillah for making us as Muslims the best, the best amongst humankind. And Alhamdulillah for giving us the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who is the best amongst us all. Alhamdulillah for giving us the reality of the afterlife. For without it, there would be no accountability for our actions in this world. Alhamdulillah for giving us Jannah to look forward to. Alhamdulillah for giving us Jahannam to stay away from. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, thumma Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Alhamdulillah for all the occasions that we find ourselves in. Alhamdulillah for making it incumbent upon himself where he says in the Quran, Inna ma rahmati sabaqad ghadabi 
which in translations means my mercy has overcome my wrath. Alhamdulillah. Wa in ta'adhu bi ni'matillahi wa la tahsuha. And if you should count the favors of Allah, you would not be able to count them. Alhamdulillah for giving us more favors if we are grateful for the ones that we already have. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru wa likum wa astaghfiru. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen As-salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Alhamdulillah 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 ala kulli khal All praises are due to Allah in every situation that we find ourselves in You know, I realized uh, we are truly blessed and we should never forget this and a lot of times we get caught up, myself included, in thinking about this life and the, the negative thoughts about the state that we find ourselves in, the state of affairs that we find the Muslim Ummah in. But if we step back and we take a look, we will find that we've been given the greatest gift that anybody has ever been given. And that is the, 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 the greatest blessing, the greatest gift that Allah SWT could give anybody, and that is guidance. To, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hidayah. That is the greatest gift that we've been given. And rather than always uh, speaking about the negative um, of what we do wrong, or what we don't have, or what we could do better, it's important for us to appreciate sometimes the blessings that we have been given. And that is why our beloved Messenger وسلم, was sent as a Bashir. One uh, who is, is, is in charge of giving good news. That is why he was sent as a rahmat alameen, a mercy for all of mankind. These are blessings that we have to be thankful for. And so the Prophet ﷺ was uh, uh, sent as a bashir. And Allah SWT many times in the Quran is instructing the Prophet ﷺ to say, wa bashir al-mu'mineen, that give glad tidings to the believers. And sometimes we forget this. But do you know who he's talking about? When he says, وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ He's talking about you, and you, and you, and you, and everybody else in this room. وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And give glad tidings to the believers, and me also. Alhamdulillah. But he's talking about all of us, and sometimes we forget this. That the khatibs get up here on this minbar, and we talk about how bad we are, how we should be fixing ourselves, we sit down in conversation, we talk about all the different uh, uh, things that are dividing the ummah, but we hardly ever remind ourselves of the one thing that brings all of us together. The one thing that brings all of us together, and that is the hidayah of the, the blessing that Allah SWT has given us for being able to call ourselves Muslim. Being able to call ourselves Muslim. And we say Alhamdulillah, not for Allah, but for ourselves, and that in and of itself is a blessing. That we say this for ourselves. Sulaiman salam in the Quran, when, uh, when the jinn brought to him the throne of the queen, how did he respond to that? He responded by saying, this is by the grace of my Lord to test whether I am grateful or I am ungrateful. And whoever is grateful, truly his gratitude is for the good of his own self. That if you're going to be grateful to Allah, I mean, this is this is the wonder of the wondrous mercies of Allah SWT, that He has given us everything that we could desire, right? And the, the epitome of all this is that He's given us life and everything that it encompasses with it. Because even our hidayah is superseded by our life. Because if we didn't have life, we wouldn't have hidayah. So the epitome of the gift that Allah SWT has given us, and He's given us everything in this creation, is He's given us life. And then He said, I don't want any thanks for it. I don't need it. This is what Allah SWT is saying. That He doesn't need our thanks, He doesn't need our prayers, He doesn't need anything from us. He is ghani. He is free of all wants. We are the ones who are fuqara, which are the ones that are poor in need of Allah SWT. So if He's not in need of us, all He says is, I've given you this, 
give thanks to me, and if you give thanks to me, if you praise me, I'm gonna give you more. Now think about that for a second. How many people in this life would ever do that? This is, this is the, 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 the wow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the one that scratches your head and says, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, that He's given us everything, and then if we're thankful for it, He'll give us more. He'll give us more than whatever we have already. And the time in this life that we have is so minuscule as if you compare it to the entire creation. And not even the entire creation, but just in, in our own hereafter. Whatever time we'll have in that hereafter, this life of 60 or 70 years is a minuscule amount. It's not even a fraction of a fraction of a fraction. Right? If you compare, if you take, if you're those that are, that are uh, in, uh, apt in math, if you take any number and you divide it by infinity, what do you get? You get zero. It doesn't matter how big that number is. And if you take 60 to 70 divided by infinity, which is the life that we have, what number are you going to get? You're going to get zero. And so what we have in this life is a zero compared to the hereafter. And so, but for us, this hereafter is something, uh, or this life is something that you can say, well, this is all we got. And so it seems like a long time for us to be spending in this life. And so um, when, we, when we do this very, very long for us, and sometimes we get sad when we think about our 60 and 70 years, and we think about all of the bad things that we do in this life. This is kind of the, the uh, you know, whenever you think about bad things that you've done and don't repent to Allah, Allah SWT, and think about the fact that if Allah, if you repent to Him, Allah uh, promises you that He's going to forgive you, that He's going to accept your tawbah. If you don't think about that, then you have to know that these, these thoughts that you're getting are from shaitan. Because everything that Allah SWT says that you're going to get punished for, He gives you a way out of it. And so if you think there's no way out of the sins that you've committed, that's from shaitan, that's not from Allah SWT. Because Allah SWT promises us that He's going to do that. Um, but uh, um, the, what I wanted to, to say from that, so if we think about these 60 or 70 years, and we think about it of how bad we are, and we don't think about how we can get out of it, then we haven't really realized the good news that Allah SWT has given us. What is the good news? The good news is that we are believers. And I just lost my... Sorry. The good news is that we are believers. We are guaranteed paradise if we just do four things in our life. Imagine that. And yes, the last time my daughter was asking me, do you think, Baba, that it's very difficult to be a Muslim these days? Do you think it's difficult? Islam uh, puts too much uh, uh, burden on us. And I looked at it, and this is what actually, this specific paragraph was while I was writing this khutbah, she asked me this question. And so I thought about this thing, and Allah SWT, uh, through the Prophet wasallam, He said, if you do four things, you're guaranteed paradise. And what are these four things? You know, a man came up to the Prophet wasallam, and he said, tell me about an action that if I do it, I will, be, I will enter into paradise. That's it. Just give me an action that if I do them, I'm going to enter paradise. And the Prophet wasallam turned, uh, turned to this man. He said, he said, worship Allah and associate no path uh, partners with Him. Number one. Establish prayer. Aqim the salah. Wa ita'i zakat. And give zakat. And fast in the month of Ramadan. And the man replied to the Prophet wasallam and said, I will not increase from this, nor will I decrease from this. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. You told me that if I do this, I'm going to get to enter into paradise. That's your all Allah SWT is going to get from me is that I worship none but Allah SWT and don't associate any partners. I pray, I give my zakat, I, pray, I fast during the month of Ramadan. And the Prophet, after the man had left, he turned to his companions and he said, If anyone is pleased to see a person from paradise, he should look at that man. Right? How easy of a religion that Allah SWT has given us. That if we just do these four things, then we're guaranteed, guaranteed paradise. Alhamdulillah, that if we fast in Ramadan, our sins are forgiven for the entire past year. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah, that we pay our zakat, uh, it purifies the wealth that we have. Alhamdulillah, that if we establish the prayer, our sins are forgiven between any two of them. Alhamdulillah, 
that if we pray our Fajr prayer and then we pray our Doha prayer, all the sins that we've committed in between those two times, they're forgiven. From Dohar to Asr, Asr to Maghrib, Maghrib to Isha, and then Isha to Fajr. And then if you pray between Jum'ah, you pray the two Jum'ah prayers, the Friday prayers, your sins are forgiven. And if you fast in the month of Ramadan, your sins are forgiven. And if you go for Hajj, your sins are forgiven. And if you do this, your sins are forgiven. And if you do that, your sins are forgiven. So Allah SWT is giving us all the opportunities in the world. He's basically laid out a whole buffet, a menu of, 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 of things we can do to be able to seek that forgiveness. And He grants it to us. And then He says, Now, Udkhul al Jannah, enter my paradise. Alhamdulillah, if we seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will grant it. Let me repeat that again. That if we seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will grant it. Because He has promised to Himself in the Qur'an, Ud'uni astajib lakum. That if you ask Me, I will answer you. If you ask Me, I will answer you. If you call upon Me, I will answer you. Alhamdulillah, if you believe in Allah and not associate partners with Him, then He has the power, He has the might, He has the majesty, He has the mercy, He has the compassion, He has the kindness to forgive everything on the Day of Judgment. That only if you believe in Allah SWT and you don't associate any partners with Him, and you do nothing else in this world, then He has that ability on the Day of Judgment. Maliki Yawmiddin, owner of the Day of Judgment. Master of the Day of Judgment. He controls everything that happens. He has no uh, burden if He decides to forgive you on that just for the fact that you were believers in Allah SWT. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ And so celebrate the praises of your Lord. فَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ But as for the favor of your Lord, proclaim it. We should be thankful for the flavors that, favors that Allah SWT has given us. And lastly, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدًا لَكُمْ That if you are thankful, I will surely increase you. Increase you in what? Increase you in guidance. Increase you in good deeds. Increase you in all the things that we're, we're, we're striving for or should be striving for, which is Jannah and the pleasure of Allah SWT. Jannah and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.